Hey everyone, as you can tell by the title in this video, I'm going to show you my top 5 favorite movies. I've been wanting to do this for a really long time, but I just kept on putting it off for some reason, but I'm going to try to do it now. Anyway, these are in order. They're going to go from number 5 all the way to number 1. And number 5 is Full Metal Jacket. This is a really good movie. It's about... It's divided into two parts. The first half of the movie is about these people who are going in for military training to be in the Vietnam War. And anyway, like through the first half of the movie, you're kind of getting to know the characters and they're um, going through basic training to get into the army. And then finally in the second half of the movie, they do get into the army and they end up going to fight in the Vietnam War. But yeah, it's a really good movie. Um, <clears throat> most people only like the first half and didn't like the second half. And I thought that way too, like when I watched it the first time. When I watched it the second time, I definitely appreciated the second half a lot better. But I do like both the first half and the second half equally. So, I mean, if you haven't seen this movie, you should definitely check it out. It's really good. Okay, the number four is Pan's Labyrinth. This just came out within the last couple years or so. Um, I have to be honest, I'm really not a huge fan of these like fairy tale fantasy movies, but this one's definitely an exception. It's about this little girl named Ophelia and her mom, and her mom is in love with this captain who's this really bad guy, and anyway, the captain is forcing Ophelia and her mom to go live with him, and her mom is pregnant with this child, so that's, why, that's another reason why he wants them to move with him. And anyway, while she's there, Ophelia ends up wandering into this labyrinth, and she's meted by this creature. And he tells her this story about this, like, king and queen who lost their daughter, but that it was always said that one day she would return in another girl's body. And this creature thinks that Ophelia is the one who's supposed to return and claim her throne. And anyway, what he does is he gives her this big magical book, and this book has a list of different things that she has to do, very dangerous things, in order to be able to go back and live with the king and queen. I mean, I know it sounds kind of corny, but it's actually really good. I definitely enjoyed this one. And I just watched it again here a few days ago, and it is a brilliant movie. And it definitely looked good on Blu-ray as well. Okay, number three is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. I like the first Terminator as well, but I think that this one's definitely better than the first one. Um, this one's kind of hard to describe, actually, but I'll try my best. <clears throat> um, it's about this woman named Sarah Connor. She's in this mental institution because she believes that sometime in the future there's going to be this big nuclear explosion that's going to wipe out, like, half the human population. And then after that happens, there's this big war that rises, like, between men and the machines. Because at this time, machines are starting to take over the world. And there's going to be this big war that started between the machines and the people who are left on Earth. And anyway, in the future, the leader of the human side is this man named John Connor, who is Sarah Connor's son. And anyways, the machines don't want John Connor to be the leader of the human race, so they send this Terminator back through time. And the Terminator that they sent back through time, uh, he looks human on the outside, but he's liquid metal on the inside. And he can, like, make himself into metal objects and stuff like that. And he's a dangerous... He's, they say he's, like, the most dangerous machine ever built. But anyway, yeah, they send this Terminator back through time to the year 19-something, I can't remember, when John is still a boy. And they send this Terminator back in time to kill him so that he was never the leader of the human race. But then the human side, they also sent back a Terminator, which the Terminator they send back is this one right here. He's human on the outside, just like the other one, only he's a machine on the inside. And anyway, they send him back through time to protect him. So, like, throughout the entire movie, they're battling each other. You know, one's trying to keep him safe, and then the other one's trying to kill him and stuff like that. And uh, also in the movie, they they go to this guy who's responsible for the big nuclear explosion, and they try their best to talk him out of it and try to prevent it from happening. But... Yeah, this is definitely a great movie, and I know I can't wait for the fourth one to come out. Okay, number two is <clears throat> Kill Bill Volume 1. I remember watching this for the first time here on YouTube. It was a really long time ago, but I remember afterwards, like when it was over, I just said, wow, that was really good. 
Um, and it's kind of weird, but it's a movie that's about this woman. They don't actually give out her name. They just call her the bride because in this movie she was getting married to somebody. But anyway, what happens is she's going to get married. And anyway, this, this group of people who are part of this assassination squad that she used to be a part of, they come to her wedding and they ambush her because they felt betrayed by her or something like that. And anyway, they kill everybody at the at the wedding except for her. And they do try to kill her, but they end up failing and only putting her in a coma instead. And she's in this coma for four years, and then one day she just wakes up from it all of a sudden. And then when she wakes up, she immediately remembers everything that had happened to her before she went into a coma. And she also remembers the people who are responsible for attacking her at her wedding. And so what she does is she escapes from the hospital and she makes up a death list of all the people who are responsible in this attack. And she's going out to different parts of the world where they are to kill them so, so that she can get her revenge. And she'll basically stop at nothing to, she'll basically stop at nothing to get her revenge. But yeah, this is definitely a great movie. I mean, for me, though, it is a movie that you definitely have to be in the mood to watch and actually enjoy. Because I have watched it before when I really wasn't in the mood and I just didn't really care for it. But when I really am in the mood to watch it, I just think it's one of the greatest things ever. And I like the second one as well, but I don't think it's as good as the first. But a lot of people do like the second one a lot better. Okay, now for my number one movie of all time. I'm sure that a lot of you might know this by now, but some of you might not, but... My number one favorite movie is The Shawshank Redemption. I cannot think of enough words to describe how amazing I think this movie is. I mean, I watched it for the first time a long time ago. And to be honest, when I watched it the first time, I didn't really think it was that great. But then I watched it again, and I just thought it was brilliant. Um, it's, ha it's actually kind of hard to describe, but... Anyway, it's about this guy named Annie Dufresne. He's played by Tim Robbins. And anyway, he's arrested and he's sentenced to life in prison for this crime. I mean, I can't say, like, if he committed it or not because it's kind of a surprise in the end of the movie. But he's sent to prison for this crime. And while he's in prison, he meets this guy played by Morgan Freeman, who also directs the movie. His name is Ellis Redding, but they just call him Red for short. Um, anyway, pretty much what it's about is it's a movie that's showing Andy's life while he's in prison and his friendship with Red, and it's also showing a lot of the horrible and illegal things that are going on in this prison. Yeah, you know, I don't really want to give out those, thing, those things, because I don't want to spoil it, but to give you an example of what I mean by illegal things is, there's one scene near the beginning of the movie where one of the guards beats a new inmate to death because he won't be quiet. You know, just a bunch of horrible stuff like that happens in the prison, and to really make an Andy's life miserable, and he wants to get out more than anything. But he ends up becoming friends with a lot of people in there. And it's just an amazing movie. I mean, if you have not seen it, you need to seriously go out and buy this now, because I just know that you're going to love it. But, yeah, those are my top five favorite movies. Um, you might agree with it, you might not, but all I ask is that, I mean, if you don't agree, please don't bash me over it or anything. But... Yeah, I finally got around to doing this. I don't know why it took me so long, but those are my top favorite movies, and I'll see you later.